So into this video, we're gonna talk about the Sony RX1R Mark III. And in my opinion, it's a camera that is being worked up as we speak right now. And it is also a camera that Sony doesn't have and the competition is actually gaining market shares in this type of form factor of cameras with built-in lens, one system, one thing to go. And let's talk about it. Welcome back guys, Gaston right here. So let's talk about the Sony RX1R Mark III and why I think this camera is going to be announced sometime soon. And also I'm gonna tell you about the features that I consider this camera will have when this happens. But first of all, let's actually talk about this scenario of cameras right now. When it comes to fulfilling to the different niches, Sony has done a pretty good job. They have cameras for vloggers, they have cameras for people that are entering the cinema world with the FX line. And also we have, you know, high, perfect hybrid shooting cameras such as the A7 line that pretty much there are a lot of flavors to choose from, including their APS-C cameras and super compact full frame. So, so when it comes to all these different segments, Sony has mapped out the industry pretty well and they are pretty much at the top of the food chain right now in every aspect. Now, but when it comes to the built-in lens camera, super compact, powerful, the one system that can do it all, they actually don't have anything else and there are a couple of companies right now that are taking advantage of that. One of those company is Leica with the Leica Q2 and the Leica Q3. This one is the Leica Q3. And the other one is Fuji with the Fuji X100V. But unfortunately, the camera is pretty hard to get as well. If you get one, you're gonna pay probably double the price, $2,500. And the camera was about $1,400 when it was first released. And even the Leica Q3, a camera that was just announced, is sold out everywhere back to order everywhere. And if you wanna get one right now on eBay, you're gonna end up paying almost $2,500 plus. Now, Sony doesn't have any camera to compete in that space. And even though they have mapped out all the other segments that I mentioned before, the only camera that they have is one from a year so, which is the RX1R Mark II, a camera that at that time was pretty good, but it has terrible battery life. Now you can still get the camera and still pay an arm and a leg for a camera that is eight years old. It's gonna cost you over $3,500 for an eight year old camera. I think it's pretty crazy. And when you compare that technology in this camera with camera that costs way less right now from Sony, it just doesn't make any sense. But I wanna tell you right now about the features that we will see in this RX1 Art Mark III. But first we're gonna talk about the Mark II because it is a camera that exists right now. First of all, the camera was released in 2015 and the Mark I was actually released in 2013. The RX1R Mark II features a full frame sensor, 42 megapixel, it has a pop-up EVF, it has a tilt up and tilt down screen, and it has the worst battery life that you can get in any camera. It uses the tiny little battery that you can find right now in the Sony ZV-1, uh, which is super tiny and you know it gives you no battery life at all. I actually was lucky enough to try that camera. A friend of mine has it. And when shooting with that camera, continuously with the camera on, you know, I got about 30, 35 minutes before the battery went out. And you gotta remember, this is a full frame camera pushing 42 megapixel and a super tiny camera. It makes no sense whatsoever. Now, the ergonomics on the camera, you know, I'm pretty used to uh, kind of like shooting with cameras with no grip, especially if you put one of those thumb rests in the back, you're not gonna have any issues shooting with a camera like that. And I think that, you know, the purpose of this camera is to be as compact as possible. Yes, we do have the Sony a7C line, which is a camera that is compact, interchangeable lens, but you know, in my opinion, different animal, we're talking about cameras that are built in with a lens, a one system, a one package that can do it all. Why I think this camera is so important right now, for the reasons that I mentioned before, Leica Q3 is a super popular camera and the Leica Q2 is even more popular than before because a lot of people that couldn't afford the Leica Q2 back then, now they are going and trying to get this Leica Q2 that people are trying to offload. I actually let mine go to get the Leica Q3 and uh, you can actually see a bunch of them on eBay probably get them around the 3,000-ish 
dollars, which is not bad for that particular camera and still a great camera today. So let's talk about some of the specs that I would like to see in this brand new RX1 Armor 3 and some of the specs that most likely we'll see in this camera. Number one is the main beef that I have with this camera. The battery needs to be swapped by an MPFZ100 battery, you know? And Sony can do that because Leica has done it. Check this out. This battery is a pretty big battery and it gives you all day battery life. No complaint with the battery life of this camera and the form factor of this camera is actually really small. Look at that. This is a small camera in my book and very similar to the RX1 R Mark II. Now the RX1 R Mark II may be slightly smaller, I don't remember very well, but could be a little bit smaller. Another thing that I would like to see in this camera, and this is something that Sony has to start doing pretty much with every single camera, built-in storage. Now, let me show you something. My Leica M11 has a 64 gigabyte built-in storage. So even if I forget the car, I can still shoot. And forgetting my SD card in my computer is something that happened more often than you may think. And being able just to go by your day shooting is something really important. And it also solves the issue of redundancy. We know that a lot of people are skipping cameras because they only have one SD card slot. And Sony has been the king at creating the best memory cards out there with the tough memory cards. And I think that Sony can actually put one of those tough cards, built it in in the main uh, board and the main PCB and be done with it. They could even go 512 if they would want to because you can get tough cards uh, 512. And I believe I've seen one terabyte, not so sure. 64, 128, 256, you know, that could be actually incredible. Now, the next thing that I want to see in this camera, I want to see a permanent EVF. The pop-up EVF, you know, was cool and dandy back then, you know, all good in the RX100 line. We also have that pop-up EVF, but I just want to see a permanent EVF, you know, kind of like the one that we have right here in the Leica Q3 which in my opinion is way better than the EVF from the Sony a7C that I'm just showing you right now. Better colors, uh, better resolution, larger, you know, way better. So if Sony can actually give us a larger EVF in this camera, that'll be great. And I think that this would be the perfect camera to give us, you know, all those upgrades from cameras that are sub $2,000 because this camera will not cost you cheap. The Mark II model costs you $3,500 right now plus when you factor in tax. And um, I don't foresee this camera being any cheaper than $3,500 and knowing that this will be a com uh, direct competitor towards the Leica Q3. So moving forward, I would like to see the latest out of focusing technology in this camera. The prior version has the contrast based out of focus, which it was slow, sluggy. So having the uh, human detection, eye out of focus, animal bugs, insect, grandpa, uh, uncle, and so on will be actually ideal in this camera. Now, the one thing that I would also like to have in this camera, it is something that could actually make this camera a Leica Q3 killer. And it is this type of screen. Now, this screen, if you want flip up, you know, you can flip up. If you want to flip down, you can flip down. If you want the screen to be flat, you can leave it flat. But if you want to flip it out, you can also flip it out. And this, in my opinion, has been one of the best implementations of screens ever created. I think that Panasonic has done that before as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, comment below. But that screen is actually really good because flipping out the screen, a lot of the time, is not the most ergonomic or pleasant thing to do when you wanna, let's say you wanna shoot um, you know, from the waist down. Now, the best way to shoot from the waist down is actually this, not with the screen flipped out, if you ask me. Now, the next thing that I would like to see in this camera is great video spec, 4K, at least up to 30p. Honestly, they can go 60p even better. I don't think they're going to go 120 uh, frames per second in a super compact uh, form factor. Heat is going to be an issue. But even if it is, you know, 4K up to 30p, 10b, 4 to 2, I will be so happy with those codecs alone. Now, keep in mind, this camera was intended to be mainly a photography camera back in 2015, but thinking about a new reiteration of a Mark III of this camera, we can actually say that this could actually be the perfect everyday shooting camera, even for content creation. Now, the lens of the Mark II is a 35 millimeters with an aperture of f2, and it is a fast lens, 
compact lens and 35 millimeter is not a bad focal length for videos like this one you know you just put the uh, camera a little bit further away and you will get up kind of like a framing kind of like this one that you see right now so no bad at all now another thing that i would like for sony to do is to re-engineer the 35 millimeters and give us a 35 millimeters with an aperture of f 1.8 if possible and also why not an nd filter so we can cut down the light when we need it still shooting wide open with this camera I would also like to see microphone input, of course, and headphone jack monitoring, and if possible, full-size HDMI, but I'm okay with a micro HDMI in this tiny little camera. So as you see, guys, this is a great opportunity for Sony to create a camera that right now doesn't exist and a camera that right now can actually go against these two cameras that I just mentioned before, but mainly to the Leica Q3, a camera that costs you right now $6,000 if you can get one. And I will be so excited to see Sony releasing this camera once again. So as you see guys, this could actually be the perfect everyday carry camera for a lot of people, specifically for myself. 35 millimeter is a pleasant focal length, you know, it's a good compromise. Uh, in between 28 and 50 millimeters. Now the sensor of this camera, I think most likely is gonna be the sensor of the Sony a7R5, 61 megapixel. Once again, competing directly with the Leica Q3, which is a 60 megapixel sensor or 61 megapixel sensor as well. And I believe it could be the same sensor as the Sony a7R5 that we have in the Leica Q3. So guys, let me know what you think about the Sony RX1R Mark III is it a camera that you would like to see happening? And in my opinion, it's a camera that we will see. Let me know in the comments down below what other features you would like to see in this camera. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.